Give thanks and praise. Much love and respect. So this will be a um, one of my last entries for quite a while, taking some time off for the summer. Uh, got some big fun lined up in my future. So I uh, just wanted to do some interpretive reads on some of the uh, modern day events, some of the terminology that is being injected into our culture. Um, you know, these are some very profound aspects of, uh, of history that will uh, be perpetuated long after we're here. And I just wanted to shine a alternative light on what they may or may not be uh, signifying. So I want to start with uh, the Joe Biden and the summer solstice ritual in which Jay Obey the Jinn had his little fall in the crosswalk. Uh, first of all, that is absolutely, positively, beyond any doubt, a solstice ritual. He is in the liminal space. He is in the crossing point. Uh, it was the week of the solstice when that event took place. And Jay Obeyed the Jinn was uh, wearing a very telltale uh, white bicycle helmet that is uh, indicative of Castor and Pollux the Gemini brothers who are known and uh, recognized by their egg head uh, shell that they both wear. One wears the top of the egg, the other wears the bottom of the egg. Uh, they both have the white egg head uh, as, their, uh, as their ritual garb. Um, <clears throat> and I have equated uh, Jay Obey the Jinn with the uh, Gemini um, uh, section of the Zodiac in the past for many reasons, uh, partially because he is <coughs> um, touchy-feely, like the lover's card. Uh, he is uh, known for his groping, for his, uh, his uh, very inappropriate relationship with uh, showing affection publicly. And that is a uh, lover's card call sign to the max. Um, and so him falling laterally is uh, signifying the sun in its three days with no vertical uh, progression. And that takes place at the pinnacle, uh, at the solstice, the summer solstice. And there's another three days in the underworld down below at the winter solstice. And I have done this in previous videos. I'm happy to do it again. You take the three days at the summer solstice and you take the three days at the winter solstice and you're looking at the Analima. Put the three and the three together and you get the Ak Alt. This is the highest eight, uh, the Analima. So uh, that ritual was very profound to me. Um, and that shell on his head is also very much indicative of uh, the sign of cancer. Uh, both of these uh, stations are uh, uh, upholding the cyborium. They are at the pinnacle. They are holding up the firmament. So having a shell as a key component to both of these uh, keystone uh, segments of the sky is uh, a bit of a nod and a wink to those in the know that the sky clock is uh, pivotal to all the rituals. Um, and another really profound thing has come to light, and that is the fact that Barack Obama, as I thought he was a Leo in tropical, it turns out he's actually a Cancer in sidereal. And that is quite gratifying, quite revealing, because uh, Barack Obama, his name in reverse, when you take Barack and read it in reverse, you get Karab. Uh, very 
very, very gratifying to know this. And thank you, uh, Mario Garza, for uh, putting out his uh, recent works on the crab and the uh, significance of the uh, cancer, the sign of cancer. Mario brought forward that the crab is has been in the past uh, signified by the scarab. And that absolutely blows my mind because Conrad Obama <laughs> was the uh, first black president of the Harvard Law Review. Uh, that's a healer, H-L-R. He's the healer. Um, very, very interesting that that is all uh, part of his bio. Uh, he is a scarab scribe, keeper of the records, um, and it is true not only to his assumed name, by the way, that's not his birth name, uh, that's his assumed name. So the persona that he is imbuing is a scribe. Uh, so it is quite telling that his birthday falls in that appropriate station of the heavens. Um, so I want to talk about that crosswalk, though. That crosswalk is really packed with information. Uh, it is the liminal space. It is the first thing that told me we were looking at a ritual. Uh, and it really supported the idea that we were dealing with a solar uh, ritual. But, uh, hailing back to the Knights Templar, the cross walk is the first uh, aspect of initiation into the Knights Templar uh, from back in France with uh, Jacques de Molay and the Knights Templar would require their initiates to walk upon the crucifix to defile that uh, symbol of authority. And so... That ritual uh, has a lot of cultural context to those who know uh, their Templar history. Um, it is also said that they would uh, be instructed to spit on the cross or uh, piss on the cross, and then, uh, which to which they would comply, and then they would be uh, prompted to blaspheme against the Christ. And only those who refused to use their mouth to blaspheme the Christ, only they were truly passing to the next level of the Templar's initiatory process. As there are aspects of these uh, initiation rituals that uh, the correct answer is to refuse. Uh, so it is really profound that there are uh, booby traps uh, put in place in these initiation rituals and that free will is, uh, is required. Uh, they are not looking for uh, full compliance. They are looking for those who have the gnosis, those who know the secrets of the, um, the true purpose behind the initiatory process. So uh, walking on the cross was uh, beneficial. It would progress you into the, into the order However, uh, blaspheming the Christ uh, would defile you. It is not what goes in a man's mouth, but what comes out that defileth a man. And so I find it quite profound that initiatory processes are uh, set with booby traps, where um, the correct answer is to refuse. That is quite something to consider. Um, so... Uh, Stepping forward the, from that uh, cross walk, the walking on the cross uh, initiation ritual, uh, the next uh, uh, ceremony involved um, uh, the, 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 the dark kiss, shall we say. I forget what it's called. It's the... Uh, uh, the Blasphemous kiss is uh, required in the next initiatory uh, phase, and uh, this involves uh, kissing an animal, kissing certain body parts. I might not want to get into that. It's such a, <laughs> it's such a joke. Um, but uh, something that has maybe slipped through a lot of people's radar, and I'll bring this graphic forward. Uh, but um, uh, Cooper, Bill Cooper. Lord 
Cooper was uh, is hailed as a bit of a savior in conspiracy culture for his book, Behold a Pale Horse. And Bill Cooper was a member of the D. Molay, Jacques de Molay Society. And that is really telling as the uh, initials for Behold a Pale Horse are B-A-P-H. And it is very likely we are looking at a hail to Baphomet and the Knights Templar. And a lot of people lean very heavily on um, on Bill Cooper's work. They lean very heavily on it. And they would be appalled to consider the fact that he was actually exalting the Baphomet. Uh, that would really ruffle a lot of feathers. Um, but I have to point out, on the cover, on the traditional cover, there is a hidden hand symbol underneath the horse's ass. And so here again we have, let's see, I'm not very good at these. We have another animal ass <laughs> signifier. There is a hand, a hidden yod, in the ass of that horse on his book cover. And that is quite telling to me that we are uh, looking at these uh, more crypt crypto uh, cryptocracy, shall we say. Those who speak in codes and put their call sign in a public place to be uh, to give disclosure, but only to those who know. It is uh, steganographic to the max. So right there on his cover, uh, many aspects of this De Molay initiate are being exalted and um, uh, uh, and lauded in the public. You know, a lot of people lean on that guy's work, and it is very revealing. It is coming true, um, but I just have to point out it has. Uh, all the call signs we need to uh, hail back to this Knights Templar initiation. Uh, very, very powerful. So, uh, another term that's being thrown around these days is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. That is an acronym that a lot of people are going to be hearing. A lot of people in colleges and universities will be dealing with this issue. And I just have to point it out. Uh, it it uh, very clearly to me is uh, the signifying the uh, Opus Dei, D-E-I, O-P-U-S-D-E-I. It's the Opus Dei, uh, not the kind of uh, associations I care to make. <laughs> uh, that is very telling. Uh, anybody who knows about the Opus Dei and their self-flatulating uh, rituals. They are, I think of them as the henchmen of the Jesuits. They are the, uh, they go and do the dirty work. Uh, and one of their uh, uh, indicators, one of their uh, call signs is uh, self-deprecation. They definitely are all about reducing your self-worth uh, so that you can uh, by extension, you can easily dehumanize your fellow man. That is uh, absolutely the prime objective of the Opus Dei, is uh, self-deprecation and, uh, and reducing your, uh, your assessment of the value of life. Let's put it that way. That's pretty, pretty much says it all. So I'll bring a graphic forward. You can look at the Opus Dei uh, insignia it is um, absolutely of the scarab beetle. Uh, it is a cross on a shield. It has a, the death card, uh, the five-petaled rose from the death card is on the shield, uh, signifying, I believe, Venus. Um, but it is also the crab's uh, shell is very subtly encoded in the Opus Dei heraldry. Um, and I have to point out, uh, I believe there is something a little more, less of the uh, Cancerian aspect because of that uh, five-petaled flower. 
I see it falling more under the sign of Scorpio. I definitely see Opus Dei falling more under the sign of Scorpio, where Ophiuchus, the serpent charmer, is found. Um, and there is a whole lot to that. Um, you know, Opus Dei, they're all about that cat of nine tails. Uh, yeah. Mm, I'll just leave it at that. They're all about the cat of nine tails. Uh, which a cat of nine tails it looks very much like an octopus. An octopus is a phonetic, not alphabetic, a phonetic anagram for opus day. Opus day, octopus, cat of nine tails. It's all there. So I just wanted to bring that one forward. I think it's pretty important that we see the call signs and that we reinforce the belief that disclosure is required, that the revelation of the method is required. It is standardized uh, in so many ways, in so many ways. Um, so next, I'm just going to float this out. I'm not going to dig into my opinion. I'm just going to float this out there. Uh, Roe vs. Wade is a, has many anagrams. I've actually found quite a few. Um, and one of the best ones that I could bring forward is we do a reverse because they have done a reverse on the verse of Roe and Wade. Um, but this is also uh, dead on arrival. <laughs> we do a reverse with your death on arrival. When you get into this world, you are converted into a corporate dead entity. It's very, very profound to me. Um, there are uh, quite a few other ways to rearrange that. I'll just leave other folks to maybe play with it. There's a lot in there as uh, there is a missing S here. Uh, uh, Sorry about the uh, <clears throat> interruption there. A little of reality seeping into the process. <laughs> uh, so, take two. Roe versus Wade. We do a reverse. Uh, we got into this on the spiders. Um, that it turns out the lady who goes by the name Roe she had a deathbed confession where she confessed that um, she lied uh, on the stand. Deathbed confessionals are uh, legal uh, statements. They're lawful. They're lawfully reinforceable on the deathbed. Um, so it, there are many deathbed confessionals, uh, you know, posture, uh, so many deathbed confessionals go down in history, but never, uh, never manage to reverse the effects of what the person is uh, confessing to. So I was mentioning that there is a missing S here. And when you put this S on the end of verses, you get swayed. You get swayed, which means smooth or soft. It means to persuade you. There is a lot of persuasive uh, value to this entire political trigger uh, that has been resurrected and thrown in the face of everybody just in time for the 4th of July and the uh, the big trauma ritual with all the things going boom. Um, in fact, you could think of uh, all of these things, the falling of the sky, the, you know, this is Chicken Little, all of this is Chicken Little, and the magic of the, these spells, uh, convincing people that the sky is falling, it's all consummated on the 4th of July when we are surrounded by the sounds of war uh, across the country. It is quite amazing that the explosiveness of the 4th of July is the casting of the, uh, of the spell. It's, uh, it's pretty next level stuff, the uh, explosive uh, uh, ingredient uh, that we recreate the trauma of our soldiers in honor of them, which is, uh, I mean, 
it's so oxymoronic it blows the mind so I was watching some of that OB1 obey one obey ma ob one kenobi there's a whole lot of obedience being trickled into our ears we are being told to obey a lot with our heroes and our uh, public figures got obey ma obey the jinn uh so ob one which is a ob and a one that's a two and a one this is Joachim and Boaz. You are initiated. So in that series, there is a nemesis character, a pissed off black lady, uh, who um, uh, is very much designed as a trigger. They actually have a trigger warning in the beginning of the, of the series. Uh, telling us that this is probably going to piss you off. And it is amazing how honest that is. It pissed me off to no end. Uh, her defining moment was when she uh, was in the temple of younglings and uh, Luke Skywalker was killing children in their school setting and she decided to cover herself in blood and play dead. That is actually a component of of real life events that took place in a, in a location with a very interesting name. I'm not going to pronounce what I'm conveying here for the sake of being uh, discreet, but you will see what I am saying. This is an anagram for this. And you better believe we are talking about this. It is quite amazing how this spell was ingrained into a film, a cinematic experience that be was begun years before this real life event happened. So uh, it is, uh, I think it's very, very valuable that we don't value uh, these fictional works as anything less than fiction. There is nothing uh, 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 of worth in the idea that they are prophets, that they are uh, generating uh, any kind of real world outcomes. This is all fiction. This is double fiction for sure. So this character uh, ends up uh, killing and slaughtering a character with this name, Reva versus Wade. And uh, a lot of uh, young minds will probably ponder the fact that uh, there could be some sort of mystical component of cause and effect here. But I'm telling you, there is no, uh, there is no cause. <laughs> this did not cause that. And, uh, it only is effect. This is strictly effect. This is a bastardizing of the uh, sixth hermetic principle, uh, an abuse of the sixth hermetic principle. So do not get that shit twisted because uh, they are twisting it for you. That's what's up. Um, so yeah, Reva taking out Wade was absolutely foreshadowing this and it was post-shadowing this, but it was made quite in advance of all of them. So it is fiction on top of fiction. Fiat Lux. Fiat is false. Lux is light. This is all false light doctrine. Look that up in your Black's Law. This is all false light. This is all color of law. It's all fiction, fiction, fiction. Curse of fiction all the way. Last one that I wanted to share with everybody is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, it only dawned on me recently, um, so I'm a little late to this party, but I think it still has a lot to offer. Uh, let's see, how, what is this? It's a, an emergency risk protection order. 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 Look that up in an old dictionary. Find an old dictionary and look that up. Order means the nine heavenly realms. That is the Enneagram. 
and is the Aeneid. Um, this is also, if you look it up in an old enough dictionary, this is the secret societies. This is the secret societies. Uh, so, emergency risk protection order. <laughs> Uh, that is pre-crime, P-R-E. This is pre-crime. They are telling you that we are being set up for pre-crime. You reverse, you, re <laughs> you redo the order of ERP and you get P-R-E. This is pre-crime. And they are laughing all the way when they put these acronyms uh, in place. So I believe that's about all I wanted to share. Uh, it will be a while before I come back on. And as soon as I say that, I will surely be compelled uh, to put some more material out. But I uh, just wanted to leave everybody with these uh, very... Uh, uh, rewarding ideas you know a lot of this is interpretive a lot of this is art um, but uh, I believe it is a very valuable art that anybody should have access to uh, you know seeing things with uh, with shall we say uh, sub rosa glasses all right, everybody, much love and respect. I hope everybody's having a great summer and not letting these spells dissuade you from your power, your center, your uh, righteousness. You know, the word self-righteous is also oxymoronic because there's nobody else is going to be righteous for you. <laughs> you can't get a lawyer to give you righteousness. You can't get Jesus to come back and give you righteousness. You're going to have to be your own righteousness. So uh, stand in that, you know. Much love and strength, everybody. We got this.